Hey friends, it's Leighton from Leighton Night coming at you from my home. Today we wanted to try something a little bit different. Um, I think we all are in need of some just nice, light, relaxing content right now. And I'm personally a really big fan of ASMR videos. Uh, I, I know not everybody gets the head tingles, but I definitely do and have gotten them when I was a child, like way before it was a thing. Am I being a hipster about ASMR? Whatever. Um, so today I thought it might be nice, uh, since a lot of people have expressed interest in mechanical keyboards, which are my favorite. I thought this might be a nice opportunity to um, share some fun facts about keyboards and also uh, just have some nice different typing sounds for you to listen to because I personally, I really like going on YouTube and just throwing on some typing sounds in the background. It makes me feel like I'm being more productive than I am. <laughs> So, uh, yeah, let's talk about some mechanical keyboards. I guess the first question is always, why mechanical keyboards? Well, for one, they look really cool, um, and you can and should pimp them out as much as possible. Um, it really gets that serotonin flowing when you get a new keycap set, but we'll get to that later. Um, people really like mechanical keyboards because they allow you to have a higher degree of accuracy when you're typing. So there are a couple of different kinds. I mean, there are so many kinds of switches, but the most common ones are called Cherry MX. Um, most keyboards should fit that profile, but then you get into the, your uh, Kales and your Gaterons and um, all those different types. But you basically can break it, break it down into a few categories. So the most straightforward one is a linear switch, which just means that when you press down on the key, it goes straight down. There's no bump. It doesn't click. It's generally really quiet. Um, so a good example of that would be like your Cherry MX Reds, um, which you'll hear later on in this episode. And then you move on to something that is tactile, which is something with a bump halfway down. So when you press down on the key, you will feel a bump. Um, and so those are really great for programming or typing um, because you really know when you have pressed the key and they're very satisfying. So a good example of that would be a brown switch keyboard or, uh, and that would be Cherry MX Browns, but there are also Gateron Browns that are tactile and you also have your um, Cherry MX Clears, which are very similar. Um, and sometimes with the tactile ones, they can also be clicky which is a thing that people talk about a lot. So you can look at something like um, Cherry MX Blues, which are really popular for gaming because they're tactile, but they're also clicky. So you feel the bump and then you hear a really loud click. So Cherry MX Blues are great. And the keyboard, uh, they're not ones that you wanna have if you spend time working around other people because they can be very obnoxious. The first mechanical keyboard I bought was um, a Razer Quartz Black Widow. So it's a, a light pink one that's really nice. But as a point of reference, if you want to hear what this like tactile bump and click sounds like, it's like... You'll hear it in better detail later on in this. Um, but you know, it's super fun to type on. It makes you feel like a real real hacker man when you're tapping away. Um, but anyway, people like mechanical keyboards because they're really satisfying to type on. They ensure a higher degree of accuracy. You're a little bit more sure about the buttons that you're pressing compared to the sort of chiclet keys you might see on a MacBook, which, you know, they, ha they have their time and place. Those can be really nice to type on. But, um, and then you get into the breakdowns of the different sizes of mechanical keyboards. So you have your biggest ones, which will have like your number pad and a separated out arrow keys. Um, and those are nice. They're very good. But I find that when you start 
getting into mechanical keyboards, you will start having the obsessive urge to go smaller and smaller. And it's this gradual thing where you're like, oh, I'll do 10 keyless, which means that you lose the function row and then you simply use a function, a function, a function button in conjunction with your number row to get those function keys back. So it, it's a slimmer profile. That's something that we would consider a 60% um, keyboard, or not quite, you can have 10 keyless without being 60%. But a 60% eliminates the number pad, um, it is 10 key less, and it's just very low profile. If you're, I actually have, I'm, I'm sad because uh, due to quarantine reasons, I cannot go to the Game Grumps office, and that's where my brown switch 60% keyboard with the pink and white button caps for uh, some RGB cycling is, and that's probably my favorite keyboard that I own right now. Um, so maybe someday later we'll do some brown switches because they probably have my favorite sound out of all the keys that I have. Um, but then you can go even smaller. I've seen people do 40% and 30% and then you get into your ergonomic keyboards. And so you would be looking at things like an Atrius or an Ergodox or an Iris or, um, what are those other ones? A dactyl, those are pretty crazy looking. Um, but those are much better for your hands, and I'm actually in the process of building my own Ergo Docs right now. Uh, which, with keycaps, if you want to get the really nice ones, you're gonna have to wait months and months for group buys. So I'm currently waiting on a um, SA Vile Bloom key set, which is very pretty if you look it up. But I bought a PCB and a clear acrylic case. The PCB is like the circuit board that is the base of the keyboard. And because I like to try different switches and didn't really want to commit to something I hadn't been able to try on a full board yet, I ordered a big bag of Cherry MX Clears, um, just because I like brown so much that it seemed like a nice thing to try. Um, and so I'm really excited to put it together because it's hot swappable, meaning that the actual switches don't have to be soldered into the board, which can be a lot of work and, you know, lots of room for error there. So instead, you can just get whatever switches you want and pop them in and out. And then you um, flash it yourself, meaning you program it, and then you uh, basically attach that programming to the board. And the great thing about the Ergo Docs is not only is it good for your hands and your wrists, and not only does it look cool as fuck, but it has programmable layers. So you can have custom macros for everything. Like, it's super customizable. Um, so it probably won't be... Especially with virus stuff, it'll probably be a few more months before it's fully operational. But it's customizing your keyboard is a deep, deep rabbit hole, and it's a very stupid, expensive hobby. Um, but it's very exciting to me when I'm able to get other people into it because there's just such a real craft to it. Like people put so much love into it, and it's such a great way to express your personality. So you have the different colored keycap sets, you can get ones that are shine through. You can get ones made out of different materials. You can get ones with weird things printed on them. And then you get into your uh, novelty or artisan keycaps, which people make these beautiful, really artfully made poured resin epoxy keys with like little koi fish in them. Or you can get one that looks like a cream puff. If you go on Etsy or Alibaba and search for novelty keycaps, you'll see what I'm talking about. And those can get really expensive. But even just getting one for your keyboard and popping it on the escape key can be really pretty. Um, what else can I say about keyboards? Um, if you're looking to get into mechanical keyboards, I have to say, as I mentioned, my favorite keyboard earlier, the 60% with brown switches, I got that off of Amazon for about $50. It's a knockoff off of a much more expensive board that people in the community swear by, which is the Ann Pro 2. It's almost exactly the same, but the brand name, I can only say it in this one way because it's spelled weird and I can't read it the way that it's intended to be because it's funnier this way. Anyway, the brand is D-I-E-R-Y-A and I can only say it like diarrhea It whatever, just like buy the diarrhea keyboard. It's so good and they have options. Um, it's great. Just make sure you pick the right one because it's it's really fantastic because you it, it's bluetooth compatible it has rgb cycling and you can wire it it has a wired connection as well so it's perfect if you want to 
use it with your phone or an iPad. And because it's so slim and small, it's really easy to just slip it into your bag and go. So I highly recommend that if you're interested, because that's about the lowest price point you can go for still getting like a really nice keyboard. So the keyboards that I'll be typing on today, first up we have my Akko Ducky, um, but both of the, actually both of the keyboards are the exact same shade of millennial pink, but the Akko Times Ducky has side printed keys. So when you look at it from the top, there are no markings on the keys, but when you sit back in your chair, you can see them all printed on the front of the keys, which aesthetically looks amazing. People are always like, how are you typing on that? And it's actually, you know, you're cheating because you can see them anyway. Uh, but now I like don't want to buy any keys that aren't side printed because I just think it looks really cool. But that has red switches on it. It's a really beautiful, compact, like everything's kind of smushed together. Not in a bad way. That makes it sound weird. But um, they make it in the pale pink and then they also have a really pretty soft teal version. Um, Ducky is a really good brand for keyboards. And then the other one, as mentioned, is a Razer Black Widow Quartz with razor green switches which again if you like the sound of that you would probably like um some ra uh, not razor uh, cherry mx blues i could go on forever about this you know there are macro pads that you can make i've i've soldered my own macro pads before and that's a really fun little project if you want an intro to soldering um but yeah i i figure we get into the bulk of this which is meant to be i recorded uh, 20 minutes of me typing on the red switch and 20 minutes of me typing on the razor greens. Um, I'm just copying as a writing warm up some chapters from Stephen King's Misery, which if you haven't read is maybe one of my favorite books ever and definitely one of my favorites of Stephen King's. So um, yeah, without any further ado, uh, here here's the red switches. Enjoy!
Well, hey now, uh, wasn't that nice? I'm, I'm a really big fan of the red switches. Um, thanks for sitting through 20 minutes of that. Uh, if you're curious, that was me typing all of, uh, chapter six in Misery. It's a good book. Read it. Up next is chapter 13 on my Razer green switch keyboard. So, uh, enjoy it. It's a lot clickier. Let me know what you think. Let me know which, uh, keyboard you like better. All right, I'll go now. Goodbye.
Well, folks, uh, that, that's about it for uh, Late Night's first ASMR episode. Uh, if you'd like to hear more of those, please do let us know. You can find us on Twitter and Instagram at Late Night, L-E-I-G-H-T-O-N-N-I-G-H-T. Uh, and on Instagram, there's an underscore between those two words. You can also email us at latenight at gmail.com. Um, this episode was, uh, produced by me and recorded in my apartment while my dog sleeps next to me, so apologize for street noises and, you know, not, there we go, there's a bus, thank you. Anyway, um, stay tuned for new episodes on Fridays with cool guests. Uh, love you very much, take care of yourselves, peace, bye. Mm-hmm.